Is CSS really CSS in NativeScript? No, it's not. It's just a convenient way for you to write styles, but it all gets converted to JavaScript. And today, we're gonna take a look at one of those conversions, which means that you can get a hold of those CSS properties in your code. And since NativeScript allows you to use CSS keyframe animations, then you can grab those animations, the keyframes, in code and manipulate them in there. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to grab the CSS keyframes in code in your JavaScript code and have fun with it. That's coming right up. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Alex. Merry Native Scriptmas. If you're not subscribed yet to this channel and you're into Native Script, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click the little bell so you don't miss any of the Native Script tips, tricks, and tutorials that we do here on this channel. And today we're looking at grabbing a hold of the keyframes that are defined in your CSS files. Why would you want to do this? Well, let's say you already have some CSS library that you're using, like Animate CSS, for example. Yeah, you can use Animate CSS library, which already has a ton of really cool keyframe animations defined. You can import that and use that in NativeScript. Let me know down in the comments below if you want to see me make a video about that. Once you grab those keyframes, you can manipulate them in code, which is something really cool that you might or might not know how to do. So that's why I made this video to let you know how to do it. And if you want to add keyframes, you can do that. If you want to remove keyframes, you can do that. And once you have that keyframe collection, you can play and cancel your animations just like you would with the NativeScript API. So without further ado, let's take a look at how we can do that. So you can grab the keyframe animations that you define in CSS and use them programmatically. Normally we apply CSS class, but we're gonna do this programmatically and you might wanna do this if you're going to be, for example, adding keyframes programmatically or controlling the animation programmatically. So let's define the keyframes. I'm gonna call this one move down and at 0%, it's just gonna be a really simple one transform and this is going to be translate zero zero oh don't need that extra colon there and i'm just going to copy this line and make a hundred percent so i'm just going to have two keyframes at zero percent and at 100 percent. and this one is going to move down so the first coordinate is x i need to alter the y coordinate i'm going to set that to 200. now normally we would have a class here that's going to play the animation, but we're not gonna do that in this case. All we're gonna do is move this label down programmatically. So here's our markup. We're gonna have a button here. Um, I'm gonna make this even cleaner. So let's just delete that first label. We don't need that. We're gonna have a tap handler and that's gonna be handled in the code behind. Here's the text for our label, which is just gonna say hello. And we're gonna give our label an ID of LBL. Now let's go to the code behind and create this on tap event. All right, so that's gonna be exporting a function called on tap, which is gonna get some args of type event data. So that's gonna be a view and args.object is gonna be our actual button that we tapped on, but we're gonna cast it as a view because buttons inherit from views. Now we are going to need the page that we live on because page has a special method on it that you'll see in a second. So I'm gonna create a page variable here page constant, I should say, and that's gonna be view.page. Each view that lives on a page has a reference to the page. And we're also gonna get a hold of that label, LBL. And we're gonna do that by using page get view by ID, which you've seen me use many times here. And the ID of that label is LBL. So in main page, we've assigned LBL as the ID of the label. This is what we wanna animate after we tap this button, okay? Just so you're clear. All right, I said page has a special method on it. And that's page dot get keyframe animation with name. This will get you a defined keyframe available to the page. It's not necessarily something that's defined with this page, but something that's available. And app.css is a global CSS file for our application, which makes these keyframes available to the page. So we're gonna just grab that by name, and the name of it is move down. And this returns us a special type that I haven't shown you before on this channel. It's called keyframe animation info. So let's import that. I'm gonna import keyframe animation info from TNS core modules, UI, animation, 
And that's coming from a different namespace that we also haven't looked at before, keyframe animation. And I always like to write out the uh, module first. That way I can just come in here, say control space, and it'll give me everything that's available in TypeScript. So you can see here that we have keyframe info, keyframes, on parse keyframe, keyframe declaration, and all these other things. The one we need is keyframe animation. And let's also import keyframe animation info because that's what this will be. Get keyframe animation with name is gonna actually give us that info object. So I'm gonna create a constant here called anim info. We actually didn't need to import that because it's implied. We need to actually specify some things if we're gonna play the animation here. One of the things we need to specify is the duration. So animation info duration, let's play it over two second period. And that's enough for now. And now I'm going to create an animation itself that we can play. And this is not a regular animation that we usually use from the animation class. This is going to be a keyframe animation. So it's going to be different. So we're going to use the keyframe animation class and the keyframe animation from info static method on it, pass in that anim info that we got from the page. This creates us an animation that we can actually play of type keyframe animation. Now we can say animation dot play and this takes in a view. So it's asking us to pass in the view that we want to actually apply the animation to, which is gonna be the label. So I'm gonna pass in LBL and this is complaining because it's requiring a view, not a view base. So get view by ID is returning us a view base, but we can cast this as a view because we know it is a view. All right, so that's gonna play. And this of course is returning us a promise. So we can say then, and when the animation is completed, we can just write out to the console saying something like played with code. Pretty cool. This also allows us to do a couple of other things and I'll show you that in a second. Let's try this out first. So here we are, I ran this already and I'm gonna tap on this button and you'll see that the hello label animates down and then it jumps back up. So when you define an animation that you wanna play, you can also specify a bunch of other properties on it like the duration, the number of times it plays, so iterations, and this includes being able to have an infinite number of times. So if we say number dot positive infinity like that, it'll just keep looping. Oh, this should say anim info. So if I tap this now, you'll see that this keeps looping over and over and over again, which I don't like those kinds of animations, but this is gonna be important in a second when I show you something else. I'm gonna calm this line out for a second. And let's go back to that uh, example where this animation just hops back to where it started. We can prevent that by saying anim info dot, and then we have all these other options here. We can delay the animation, we can change the curve, we can change the duration, which we already did. And then look at this, we can actually access the keyframes. So this is an array of keyframes. And if I access the first one, for example, we can take a look at the curve of that one, the declarations, the duration, for example, declarations is an array of a keyframe declaration type. We have a property and a value. These are the things that we actually defined here. These are the keyframes and we can access each one of these in code. We can add more of these if we want to. So if you wanted to create your keyframes entirely in code, you can do that as well. There's one more thing I want to show you and that's is forwards. And this is a Boolean flag that says if we set this to true, it just basically says whatever your animation that's playing, when it's done, apply the final values to the object itself that you animated so it stays put where it ends up. In other words, when I tap on this, hello is gonna slide down and it's gonna stay there. It's not gonna bounce back to the beginning values. Typically, that's the result that you want. Now, what's also cool about this is that you can cancel the animation. So animation has this cancel function on it and you can call this at some point, if the animation, for example, is something that's taking too long, you can cancel it. As an example, I'm gonna uncomment this line that says iterations is positive infinity. So it's gonna keep looping. And I'm gonna set a timeout here to uh, let's say um, four seconds. And after four seconds, I wanna cancel this animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. And this should play through two iterations and then stop because each iteration is two seconds. So I'm gonna tap on this button and it's gonna play once, it's gonna play twice, and then the animation is gonna be canceled and it's gonna stop. 
So there's just another one for you to add to your bag of tricks for native script animations. And as usual, you can always leave me comments down below if there is some tutorial you want to see. Let's take a look at some of the comments you left me from this video from a couple weeks ago called Animated Image Blur. So this is a trick that I show you how to do in NativeScript on how to create an image blur, but we're not using any kind of heavy duty API calls to the native land. We're just blurring this image using a pretty cool trick and technique that I show you how to do. It only works for images, but that might be all you need. However, this is a really simple cross-platform technique that works the same way on iOS and Android. And if you haven't seen that video, check that out. Kareem Double says, nice tutorial. Please keep going with your awesome NS tutorials. I like the new intro sound every time. Well, I do try to keep the music lively here. Thanks for that remark, Kareem. Sergey says, hi, Alex, thanks. I found this implementation of the Gaussian blur algorithm for pure JS. Might it can be useful for a native script. Possible usage flow is grab colors from the image, put it in array, processed by the lib, and replace old image source with the result. I really like that idea. I haven't tried this JavaScript library yet for the blur, but if this works, then this would be really cool. Do let me know if you found a way to do that blur. Now, I did mention that this might depend on the browser's Canvas API, and if that's the case, the native script land doesn't have a Canvas API. That's only in the browser. So if this library depends on that, it might not work. But if there's another image blurring library that works only in JavaScript without touching browser-related APIs, and this might work. Thanks for that, Sergey. That's it for this week. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below, or you can always reach out to me. I'm at Digitalix on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy native scripting.